Hi friends, my name is Baji. Welcome back to our channel. In our previous video, we discussed the test executions and reporting basics. If you haven't watched that video yet, I highly recommend watching it first and then continuing this video. In today's video, we will take test executions to the next level by going through the concept of distributed load testing. In real time, all of our performance test runs will be conducted using this mode only. So let's dive right in without any more delay. So what is distributed load testing? Before going any further, let's try to understand the problem statement here. Consider an online shopping website for instance. During festive seasons or special events, there could be numerous promotions on various products. In such cases, the website might experience higher volume than usual. To evaluate how well the application performs under these high workloads, it is essential to test it with a peak load. If we conduct the load test on a single machine locally, we can only simulate a limited number of threads or users based on the hardware configurations and the type of the test plan. So this is where Jmeter introduced the concept of distributed load testing. So distributed load testing refers to the process of distributing the workload generated by the performance test across multiple machines or servers. This method helps to simulate a large number of virtual users or threads on the target system allowing for more accurate assessment of the system scalability and performance under realistic workload conditions. Before we dive into the steps for doing this distributed testing, it is a good idea to understand the terminology used in this type of testing. So let's explore them now. First one is control node. In the past, this was referred to as a master system. In other performance testing tools like load runner, it is called as a controller. So this is the system running Jmeter GUI or non-GUI, which controls and coordinates the overall testing process. It is responsible for managing and distributing the load across multiple servers and collecting and aggregating the results. Next we have worker nodes. Previously they were referred to as slave systems. In load runner, these worker nodes are referred to as load generators. Basically they receive instructions from the control node or master system and simulate load onto the target system. In high load test scenarios, we will have multiple worker nodes. These systems periodically report performance metrics and test status back to the control node or master system. Finally, we have the target system. This is where the actual application will be running. During the test, the worker nodes will simulate the load on this target system and gather all the performance related metrics of the system or application. Next, we will look at some of the prerequisites for this distributed load testing. We need to make sure to use the same version of Jmeter and Java on both the control node and worker nodes. Mixing different versions will not work correctly. We also need to ensure that there is a connectivity between control node and worker nodes. If there are any firewall rules in place, we need to work with the network teams and make sure that they allow the communication between the control node and worker nodes. We also need to ensure that all the system used in the testing are on the same subnet. Basically a subnet is a network inside a network. Through subnetting, network traffic can travel a shorter distance without passing through unnecessary routers to reach its destination. Okay. Before starting the distributed load testing, certain configurations must be set up. So let's go over those configurations now. The first configuration is SSL setup. Jmeter uses remote method invocation also called as RMI as the remote communication mechanism. Basically, RMI is a Java API that allows objects on one computer to interact with objects running on the different computer. Since Jmeter 4.0, by default RMI will use SSL and SSL needs keys and certificates to work. So, we need to create those keys and certificates. Jmeter comes with a script called create RMI key store to generate a key store and contains one key and its corresponding certificate. So we can use this one key and certificate pair for all worker nodes and control nodes to transport the communications more securely. To set up the SSL key, we need to execute the create RMI key store script which is available in Jmeter bin directory and answer to the questions that the program asks. Here we can type anything as long as it is accepted by the key certificate pair generation script. Once we execute the script, it will generate a RMI key store JKS file. By default, the validity of this key certificate pair will be seven days, but we have an option to extend this duration. Okay. Finally, we need to copy this JKS file to Jmeter bin folder in all worker nodes. We have an option to skip this SSL setup process by updating the server RMI SSL disabled property under Jmeter properties. By default, this property is set to false. That means we need to set up SSL. Next one is worker node setup. 
before we start the actual test we need to make sure that all these worker nodes are up and running so we need to go to jmeter bin directory and execute the jmeter server bat script if you are using on windows if you are on linux or mac then you need to use jmeters-server.sh script we need to repeat this step for every worker node that we are using in the distributed load testing by default jmeter server will use a random port for communication if you want a specific port for the jmeter then we need to specify that server rmi local port property okay finally we have control node setup on the control node we need to go to jmeter bin directory and open the jmeter properties file and specify the worker node information in remote underscore score host property if you have multiple hosts then you can use comma as a delimiter while specifying this ip address information by default the control node or master server will use a random port for communication if you want a specific port for the control node then we can specify that in the client rmi local port property now let's set these configurations in jmeter and run a quick distributed load test okay so to demonstrate the distributed load testing process i'm going to use two machines one windows and the another one is mac here i'm using my windows machine as the control node and the mac as the worker node okay it's not necessary that you have to use mac or windows based on the system's availability you can configure any one system as your control node and another one as the worker node once the machines are ready and the first step that we need to do is to verify whether all the prerequisites are met so the first prerequisite is to make sure that both control node and the worker node is running the same java and jmeter version so let's first verify the java version in the control node so let's type java hyphen hyphen version which will give you the java version installed on this control node so here i have java 21 version installed let's do that same thing on the worker node as well so let's type java hyphen hyphen version here as well we got the java 21 version so that means java is installed on both machine with the same version let's do the same thing for jmeter as well so let's verify jmeter on the control node jmeter hyphen hyphen version here on the control node i have jmeter installed with 5.6.2 version let's verify that on the worker node as well so since it is a mac i have to use dot forward slash jmeter dot sh hyphen hyphen version so here as well i have 5.6.2 so that means both jmeter versions are also same and the second prerequisite is to make sure that both control node and worker node are in the same subnet since i am using these two machines in our home internet i can confirm that these two are on the same subnet okay and the final thing is we need to make sure that there is a connectivity between control node and worker node in real time there is a chance that we were not able to connect from control node to worker node in that case you need to work with network team to understand if there are any firewall rules blocking the connectivities if so you need to submit the firewall rule request and then they will open up that particular rule for you okay so once you confirm that all the prerequisites are made then we need to start the configuration steps let me clear these two screens and then we will start the configurations so the first configuration is ssl setup i'm planning to demonstrate this distributed testing in two ways first without ssl setup and then with ssl setup for the first demonstration we will try to skip the ssl configurations since jmeter 4.0 by default rmi will use ssl so that means we need to set up the ssl if you want to run any distributed load testing but we still have an option to skip that setup so we need to go to jmeter properties i have opened that property file in my visual studio code you can open it in notepad or you can even open it from the terminal here go to server.rmi.ssl.disable so this is the property which controls whether we need to configure the ssl setup or not by default it will be false so that means jmeter is forcing us to do this setup so we can uncomment this property and then change the value to true that means you are telling jmeter that you are going to skip the ssl configuration okay so let's save this and we need to repeat the same thing on the worker node as well so let's go to the terminal I'm already into jmeter bin directory so let me open that jmeter.property since it is mac i'm using vim utility vim is kind of a text editor to edit any files in mac or linux so let me look for server.rmi.ssl and then disable okay so this is the property let's go there and then uncomment it and change the value to true so let's save it so the skipping the ssl setup is completed and the next step is on the worker node we need to start the jmeter server script so that worker node will be ready to take any instructions from the control node okay 
So that particular JMeter server script is also available under JMeter bin directory. So let run that script JMeter hyphen server. You have to run this script before you actually start the load test. Okay. So here, if you noticed, it is saying that remote object has been created and this is the endpoint information and using this particular port. We can also control this port because in real time you might be using specific port to do this distributed load testing, right? You will not be using random ports because firewall rules might be open to specific ports. So let's configure this port to a specific port. Okay. So let me stop the script again. We need to go to the JMeter properties. We need to look for server.rmi.local port. Okay. So let's go there. By default, it will use 4000 port. Let's keep that port so that our worker node will listen for that 4000 ports for any instructions from the control node. Okay. So let me rerun the same script again. Now, if you notice here, it is listening 4000. Earlier, it was listening 64,079, right? If something else is running on that same port, then there will be a conflict. Then you cannot run this load test. So we have completed the worker node setup. Now we have to go back to control node and then update the worker node information in the JMeter properties. So let me open the properties again here. We need to look for remote hyphen host. So this is the property which controls what are all the different worker nodes that this control node is going to work with. Okay. So here we need to update our worker node information. So our worker node IP address is 192.168.2.171. Okay. So let's save this. And then after updating the remote host property, then we need to open the JMeter script. So let's open the JMeter first and then open the JMeter script. So we are going to use the same script that we have used in our previous demo, which is pet store demo application script. So let me open that JPET store demo. Okay. So here we have five transactions, one thread group with one thread and ramp up is one and loop count is two. In this test, we will be running a simple test. We don't want to run duration basis because you already know how to run the test for the duration basis, right? So the process is pretty much same. We just wanted to understand how we can execute the distributed load testing using control node and worker node. Okay. So before we start the execution, we also need to make sure that the application is up and running. In our previous demo, I have deployed that application on my Windows laptop as a Docker image. So I will be using that same application. So let's open the application manually first. This is very important because if you are starting the test without validating your application, there may be chance that sometimes your application might be down and you started the test and you consumed all your test data. So it's always better to validate that application first and then make sure everything is okay. After that only you start the test. So the application URL is localhost colon 8080 because that application is deployed on this Windows laptop. So let me open. So here the application is up and running. If you notice the previous page looks like it came from cache, but when I click the enter store, I got this particular error message. Generally, we will get this kind of error message when the application is down or not accessible. Okay. So let's go to our Docker desktop to understand what is the status. So if I see here, the container is in the exited status. That means it is not running. And that is the reason we got this particular message. For some reason, if we skip this verification and then start the test, then we might be seeing all our transactions with failure status. Okay. So let's start the container first. I'm starting it and then go back to application, refresh this page. So now you can see the application. Now you can do some quick transaction or sanity check to make sure that it is working fine. Okay. Once you confirm that application is fine, then we are good to start the test. So we did the control node setup and worker node setup, right? We can also verify if these configuration setups are correct by going to run menu and then remote start. If configuration is correct, then it should show up the IP address of the worker nodes here. Since in this demo, we are only going to use one particular machine as our worker node. That is why it is showing that particular machine IP. Okay. So let's enable the view results tree. So here we are trying to do the distributed load testing using GUI mode. We will also see it in non GUI mode after we completing this GUI mode test. Okay. Let's go to run, go to remote start and then select that particular IP. If you have more than one worker node, then you can also select remote start all, which will start the test on all the worker nodes. Okay. And one other thing I would like to mention here is the number of threads property configuration. When we start this conversation about distributed testing, we understand that distributed load testing is nothing but distributing the load across different machines, right? Let's say if you want to 
test your load test with 200 threads and you configure 200 as here and then when you start the test what exactly will happen is controller node will send a copy of this test plan to each worker node let's assume that you have two worker nodes in your scenario and once you start this test geometer will send this test plan to those two worker nodes then each worker node will look for this thread properties configuration and then execute the test since we have configured the number of threads as 200 each worker node will run the test for 200 that means instead of executing the test for 200 threads you will end up executing it with 400 threads so that is why you need to make sure what is your threads requirement and also you need to understand how many worker nodes are available for you to test it and configure this property accordingly okay so let me make it as one and then let's go back to run remote start and click the ip address so which will start the test on the worker node we go to view results tree then we can see the results here now we can see there is a failure let's see the status here it is saying starting the test so it got the instruction from control node and it started the test for some reason the transaction got failed okay let's try to understand why it is failed so the response code it is saying non-http response code and then go to request url so all the transactions got failed okay so if you look for anything it is not showing up any request so the reason for failing all this transaction is if you carefully notice the url of the application here we have specified the server name as localhost and we are trying to execute this test from different machine right so when this test is being executed from different machine and if the url is http localhost then that particular machine will look for that application inside that machine but this pet store demo application is deployed on our windows laptop right which is acting as a control node so that is the reason the worker node was not able to hit this url and then failed so what we need to do is instead of giving the url as localhost we need to specify the ip address of this windows machine so let's do that now yeah so the ip address of the windows machine is 192.168.2.38 okay let's copy this here so i intentionally kept that as a local host for the initial run just wanted to show you that error and try to explain the reason for that error so that if you are facing this similar situation in real time then you will understand what exactly the root cause okay let's save the script and then clean up the results go to the run and then do the remote start again okay so let's go to view registry this time we have the successful response so it sent a request to this and then it got the response back so this is the way we can do the distributed load testing by skipping the ssl setup so after this test we will do the ssl setup and then rerun the same test okay so let's wait for this test to be done and then we will do the ssl configuration if you go back to our worker node we can see the test is started and once the test is done we will see the status called finish the test and one important thing here is again once the test is done this jmeter server script will not be stopped so we need to stop this server script otherwise it will keep on running on it and it will unnecessarily consume the system resources but now let's stop this script so we have two iterations and everything is okay the transaction file is failed because we have configured assertion in such a way that this transaction will fail so that we will be seeing both past transaction as well as the failed transaction okay so now let's close this jmeter script and then clear the both screens so to configure ssl the main important step that we need to do is we need to execute one script called create rmi key store that script is available in jmeter bin directory so if we go back to our jmeter's directory files here we can see one script called create rmi key store dot bat so if you want to execute the script in windows you have to use dot bat extension script and if you are on linux or mac you have to use dot sh okay when we execute this script what it will do is it will create a jks file which will have a key and certificate and this certificate is valid only for seven days by default we can also extend that validity by going into this particular script and then updating the validity period okay for this demonstration purpose we will leave that validity as seven days and then let's go to the terminal execute this particular script so create rma key store dot bat so before we execute the scripts let's make sure that we don't have any jks files here with the name rmi key store so nothing is here let's also verify in the 
worker node we don't have anything so let's execute this script so once we start the script it will ask some questions so we need to fill that information like first it is asking what is your first name and last name we can say rmi and then organizational unit that is also rmi and the name of your organization we can say rmi and city you can say some abc once you fill this information it will ask for your confirmation whether the field information is correct or not so let's say yes and then it will create a key pair self-signed certificate which will valid for seven days okay now if i look for dot jks files in this jmeter bin directory i can see rmi key store okay so this is the first step in the ssl configuration to generate this jks file once you have this file then you need to copy this file to all the worker nodes and also you need to make sure that the ssl configuration property in jmeter.property is commented out because to skip that property we uncommented it and then updated it as true so let's do that now go to jmeter.properties and then look for server.rmi.ssl.disable let's comment this out okay you need to do the same thing on the worker node as well okay let's update that property in the worker node as well so let's search for server rmi ssl dot disable and then comment out this let's save it now we need to copy this rmi key store dot jks file to the worker node so you can use any way to copy this file from this control node to worker node i am using the scp command utility that will securely copy the file from this control node to worker node so the syntax for that is first we need to type scp and then the file name which is rmi key store dot jks and the target machine information so i'm providing my mac information and then we need to specify the path so i want to store that in same jmeter folder so in software it's apache jmeter 5.6.2 bin okay so i want to copy this key store file into bin directory so let's do that so it is asking me to input my password now the file has been copied if we go to the worker node and look for that jks file we can see rmi key store earlier it was showing no matches phone but now this time we have the rmi key store dot jks okay once you copied this file to worker node and the remaining steps is pretty much same you need to start the jmeter server script in worker node first so let's do that once you start it now you can see the additional information of the jks right earlier we were not seeing all this key store information when we run this jmeter server script since we have configured jks that is why it is showing all this information and from the control node it's pretty much same we need to open jmeter and then open the script and run the test so let's open the script again we we'll go to the desktop jmeter pet store demo okay so we have number of threads as one okay let's go to run and then remote start select the worker node ip if everything is okay then you will be seeing this successful transaction and then if you go to the worker node terminal you can see it is saying that the test has been started so let's wait for this test to be done so this is the way we will configure ssl key certificates in worker nodes and then do the test so that all the requests will be communicated from control node to worker node in a secured way so this is the recommended approach that we need to follow whenever we are doing these things in real time okay so this test is completed now let's close the script and then rerun the same test using non gui method okay let's so the first step we need to make sure is we have to disable all the listeners if you have any listeners configured in the script we need to disable it so let's disable the view registry and then close this script because i need the terminal to execute that command that is why i'm closing it but you don't need to close if you have already another terminal window open and then i will go to my jmeter script folder just to make sure that i'll clean up anything there previously that any results that we have it so let me clean those up first so i have a jtl file let me delete this and also the results files so if you recollect the command that we need to use to execute the script in non gui mode is jmeter and then we need to specify a hyphen n this is to tell that we are going to execute this test in non gui mode and then hyphen t after that we need to specify the script path so jpet store demo script is available in my desktop so i'm copying the path here and then specifying it here and then jpet store demo dot jmx after that we also need results right so we will say hyphen l and then specify the results path so we want the results to be in the same directory and give the results name so jpet store demo dot jtl uh, after the end of the test i want a html report to be generated for that we need to give hyphen e option 
and we want those results to be stored in a location right so we want for that we need to specify hyphen o and then the results path so the results path is this let's specify so until this point this is pretty much same that what we have seen in our last video to add the distributed load testing scenario here we need to specify some additional options so we have two options available hyphen lowercase r and hyphen uppercase r both are both will be used to do the distributed load testing if you specify hyphen lowercase r then you don't need to specify the worker node information because geometry will pick that information from the geometer dot properties file but if you are specifying hyphen capital or uppercase r then you need to specify the ip address of those worker nodes if you have multiple worker nodes then you need to specify them by separating them with comma okay we will see both options first we will see with the uppercase r and then we will see the lowercase r as well okay so the ip address of our worker node is 192.168.2.171 okay and finally we also want the jmeter server script to be stopped after the test execution for that we need to specify hyphen uppercase x so these are the two options that you need to use if you want to do the distributed load testing using non-gui or cli method okay since we are doing it in non-gui mode we also want to see some kind of results while the test is happening right for that we need to go to jmeter properties and enable the summarize configuration so let's do that first summarizer and looks like those are already enabled for me in case if it is not enabled for you you can uncomment all these options here and then do the test okay now let's execute the test so it started the test and you can also see on the worker node it is saying that starting the test on host so and so and then we are also seeing the summary information this is the way we need to do the distributed load testing using non-gui mode once this is done then we will see the other option which is lowercase r so it may i think it may take a few seconds to complete this test since we specified hyphen uppercase x on the worker node once the test is done it will stop the jmeter server script also now if you see here after finishing the test it stopped that server script so let's go to the results so here you can see the html report so this is the jpet store demo so total number of transactions to failures right 80 percent pass and 20 percent fail and then you can also go to jmeter script you can see the jtl results okay so let's delete this because we want to re-execute the same test with other distributed load testing option so go to worker node first we need to run the jmeter server script and then instead of specifying ip address just specify hyphen lowercase which will do the same thing here this time it will look for the ip address from the jmeter properties okay so here if you see it is already picked that ip address configuring the remote engine we did not specify this ip address anywhere in the command right don't worry i will be sharing all these commands information in the notes so you can copy those commands and practices but try to understand all the different options so that will be easy for you when you are doing this execution in real time so the test is completed here also it is exiting the remote servers and the end of the run okay so this is the complete step-by-step -step process to do distributed load testing in both gui and non-gui modes i hope it is clear so that's it for this video thank you so much for staying till then and supporting me i hope you found this video helpful if you have any questions or want to share your experiences feel free to leave a comment all the video notes have been uploaded in github and you can find the link in the description if you are new to our channel please consider subscribing and also like and share this video so that others will also get benefited i'll see you with the next video in this module until then take care stay safe and keep learning